Paramount Picture. Hi, this is Jerry Beck, and uh, this is the audio track commentary for uh, the Max Fleischer Color Classics DVD, the first cartoon in the series, Poor Cinderella, which was done in uh, two-color Technicolor. That's why you'll see a lot of green and red and blue. And uh, in fact, you'll notice later on in the film that the prince has blue teeth. It's done in the Cinecolor process, as it says there. And um, these uh, color classics, of course, were uh, Fleischer's answer to Walt Disney's Silly Symphonies cartoons. And um, they tried to, uh, right off the bat, they tried to make a very ornate cartoon, as you can see here. Uh, very fancy, almost too much detail in uh, the cobblestones and the roofs and all of the details in the backgrounds. You'll see more of that as we go along. It's just almost overdone. Do they really need to have uh, so many dishes? And of course, Betty Boop was the star of the first color classic. They put their biggest star at the time in the film. Although the Fleischer studio had a, another star at the time, which was Popeye the Sailor, but he was owned by King Features. So I guess they put Betty Boop, who they owned completely, in this film. Now you'll notice Betty has a uh, different hair color. She's kind of got a red hair instead of the black. I guess it was just an attempt to make everything as colorful as they could with the, the two hues that they had, red and uh, blue, basically. And uh, here's an original song that uh, Betty is singing, which, again, aping uh, what Disney was doing. He, Disney had such success with uh, the Silly Symphonies and the original songs that were in those films. And Who's, Who's Afraid of the Big Bad Wolf was a huge hit for Disney, both as a song and as the, the, the film itself. So these color classics have great original songs throughout the whole series. And uh, a lot of them are uh, written or co-written by Sammy Timberg. We'll talk more about that later on some of the other audio tracks, but uh, really great stuff. Um, this film, of course, uses the uh, Max Fleischer stereo optical process, uh, which gives a 3D effect. Um, this is before Disney uh, created his multiplane camera for the same idea. And you'll be seeing that effect very soon. We'll point it out when you do see it. It would be pretty obvious. Cinderella. Pretty Cinderella, you're unhappy, I can see. I'm your fairy godmother, listen to me. Dry your little eyes, there is no need to cry at all. You're In addition to the uh, Betty Boop series of cartoons and the Popeye series of cartoons, the Fleischers also had a series of screen songs, which were the uh, series of black and white cartoons that featured uh, celebrities, usually in live action, uh, musical stars of the day, singing a popular song of the day, uh, and the audience could sing along with the bouncing ball. So the Fleischers had a lot going at this point. The Color Classics were another, again, another great series for them. Now you're probably listening to Betty's voice. They, I think to add to the specialness of this cartoon, the Fleischers decided to upgrade I'm Betty Boop's voice. What's wrong with my voice? Well, oh, what are you doing here? I'm just a poor Cinderella. Nobody loves me, it seems. There's nothing wrong with my voice. <laughs> well, uh, that's great, but uh, Max Fleischer didn't use your real voice in this film, did he? I was too busy um, with my regular cartoons, like Little Pal, You Want a Spot in My Heart. Hmm. What about that one? Well, that's, that's great. Um, uh, what can you tell us about the color classics? As long as I have you here for this audio track commentary, uh, what's the story behind this cartoon? That's my stand and my body double. I never had red hair like that. I'm a brunette, not Lucille Ball. <laughs> well, uh, so if you had done this film, uh, what would have been different? Oh, Pudgy would have been in it, and Bimbo would have been the prince. 
<laughs> what about Coco? Well, he would have been an evil stepsister. Can I sing a song? Oh, uh, well, why not? Sure, go ahead. I'm just a poor Remember Cinderella. Nobody loves me, it then. seems. And like a poor then? Cinderella, I find my romance Remember. in dreams. Remember. For that's where I meet my Prince Charming. When I'm with him, cares fade away. I'm just a poor Cinderella. But I'll be a princess someday. That was pretty good. That was much better than the person who sings it on the actual track. Um, so, uh, what was it like working with Max? Oh, uh, Uncle Max was very loving, and he um, always would rescue me from uh, the inkwell. You did a lot of cartoons with Grampy and Pudgy. And, um, did you have a favorite? One of my favorites is Little Nobody with Little Pudgy. Where Pudgy gets his feelings hurt from some dog who lives next door, and he comes back over to me, and I have to sing to him and get his spirits up. And I particularly like that one because it's so heartwarming. Well, thank you for dropping in on this uh, this audio track commentary of poor Cinderella. Well, thank you, Jerry. Uh, bye bye. Every shot is just spectacular in this film. Uh, there's just so much detail, so many extra characters. Every little building has so many little nuances to it. And uh, they just went all out to make this, this, particularly this first cartoon, just a spectacular effort. Uh, really, not many of the other ones are this elaborate. Uh, later on, we'll see uh, Somewhere in Dreamland, which was the first one in full three-strip Technicolor, and that one uh, has a lot of elaborate background settings that I believe done to show off the, the full color, but uh, this is the most elaborate uh, one of the, of the series. Some historical notes. Max Fleischer was born July 19, 1884, and Dave Fleischer was born July 14, 1894. That would make Max Fleischer about 50 years old when he started doing these color classics cartoons, and Dave Fleischer was uh, 40 years old at that time. Max Fleischer created the rotoscope in 1915, and it was patented in 1917, and it's still in use today by special effects technicians and animators. Max Fleischer was a cartoonist and uh, he became the art editor for Popular Science Magazine in 1914. His earliest films beginning in 1917 were educational and mainly for the Army. He did one called uh, How to Read an Army Map, and uh, he also did one called The Electric Bell, and they're just extremely simple, uh, really educational, animated films. Here's one of those great 3D backgrounds that we were talking about. This was done on a uh, tabletop setup. Uh, it was shot horizontally, not vertically. Usually an animation camera is above shooting animation artwork below. And they would build these sets on a, on a, a round table, a giant round table, very intricately done. And they would place uh, a, a pane of glass in front of the, uh, the sets they would put the animation art uh, on this pane of glass and shoot it one frame at a time and then move the set one frame at a time and it would give off that three-dimensional look. And it's really spectacular. 
And the uh, title cards at the beginning and end of this film are uh, unique to this film. Uh, starting with the next film, they, they set up a, a certain standard uh, title card art that uh, lasted for, mo for half of the series. Uh, the titles for this, this film were done more like a, like a stage play with the curtain coming down. It's very, very spectacular. Separate curtain for the Paramount logo.